Right, so what I want to do is I want to basically show you how to use Fuff. Now, Fuff is a very, very good tool when it comes to content discovery or subdomain enumeration or whatever you can really think of when it comes to websites, right? Now, so let's just actually just let me show you what is Fuff. Now, if you don't have Fuff installed on Kali Linux, which is, to be honest, I would say rare because Kali Linux has Fuff pre-installed, so you should already have it on your system. How to check? All you need to do is just type in F F U F. And if it basically highlights on blue and you press enter, if it displays a help menu, it means you have installed. If not, then it should say like, do you want to install this? Just type in yes in your password, right? Okay. So we have a help menu, right? Help menus are very, very important. And this, this is the first thing you should do, right? So I'm just going to get to it right now. It is very, very easy to use Fuff. It's not really a difficult program, but it could be a little confusing. That's why obviously I'm making this tutorial for you guys to understand and not get confused and I'll make this as easy for you guys to understand, right? So the way we just basically run Fuff is we need to put, in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to find um, directories, right? So we're going to do Fuff U HTTP. Now here, what you just need to specify is either an IP address or a host or a domain, right? So whatever you have, just specify. If you're doing CTFs, you most likely either will put a host or an IP address, right? So I'm just going to fill out the options. And here what you can see is that I'm going to put forward slash fuzz. Now, why am I doing this? Fuzz is a keyword for fuff. Basically, by putting fuzz, we're telling fuff to fuzz and look for stuff there, right? So basically, fuzz is like a keyword, right? So I'm going to put a word list and hyphen W is a word list. Hyphen U is a URL. So you're specifying the URL. And FW is a filtering option. I'll actually delete it for a second because I want to show you one thing, right? So I'm just going to let this run. And what's going to happen, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of noise, which is not good, right? And um, all of this is really just a, just a waste of... Um, it's just confusing, right? It's not really something we're interested in. So what we can do, that's why I also love Fuff. I don't think other programs like GoBuster doesn't really have these things, if I'm not wrong. Uh, what you can do is if you type in hyphen H, even if you're payload and you press enter, what you can do is you can filter stuff out. So if you come to filter and uh, match your options, what you can do is you can basically exclude what you're not interested in. So what we're going to do, as you saw, I use the hyphen FW flag, right? So we're going to put F, um, hyphen FW. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out something from here. Now, I cannot filter out status 200. Because the status 200 is something I'm interested in and status 200 is okay. So I can't do, I can't filter out 200. But what you could do is filter out 404, 403, 401, something that you can't really access directly and you would have to either find a way to access it or bypass it or exploit it, right? 401 also means unauthorized, right? 403 means forbidden. So you would have to find a way to bypass these things, right? But as you can see, it says like words 22 or size 177 or lines 5, right? But the easiest one is just words. So I'm just going to filter out the words 22. So if I come here and I just put the flag 22. So FW22 and I'm going to press enter. As you can see, I go rid of, I go rid of all of that noise. And I, what I can do now is I get all my results clean, right? And as you can see, all my results here and I can access them and I can inspect what they are. Now, additionally, just one more thing. As you can see, there's two things. Now, this is a directory, right? Usually what you would have is a forward slash, but in this case, there's no forward slash. I don't know why Fuff doesn't have a forward slash, but it doesn't really make any difference. And admin txt, right? Admin txt, is, it's a file, right? So if you have any files like, I don't know, maybe robots.txt, that's a file, right? So if it has an extension, that's most likely a file. But you should always check everything out because sometimes you can have files with no extension, right? So you should always check these things out. Now I'm going to show you a simple way to how to fuzz for files, which is basically it's the same thing that you would fuzz for directories. But what you need to do is you need to adapt your word list to whatever you're fuzzing, for example, for WordPress or, or something. You would just change the word list to, let's say, example, something with .txt files, right? Or .php or configuration files, whatever you can really think of. You just need to change your word list, right? So I'll show you, I'll demonstrate it how to do this. So we're just going to do, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to change my word list. I'm going to remove this as well. There's no need for this. So I'm just going to change it to a word list. Um, it only has one entry, but it's just to prove a point, right? I'm going to let's just send this, right? So as you can see, I just changed my word list, which only consists of admin.txt, 
right? So it only has a file, but if you go to your browser, let me actually try to curl it, I should be able to curl it, which is also... Um, curling is also pretty cool. Um, if you are a... If you pen test websites a lot, curl is something you should get familiar with because it allows you to... Yeah, there you go. So what I've done is I just curled a .txt file and it actually shows you the contents, right? This is important and also useful because it is sometimes faster to check what the file is rather than just you. Right, so I've decided to jump on the Hack the Box to show you how to enumerate subdomains because I think it's very important that you do know how to enumerate subdomains, right? And especially for CTFs, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to specify a etc host entry that allows us to basically enumerate a domain, subdomain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my IP address, which is 15324, and I'm just going to call it board.htb. Right. And what we're going to do, I'm going to explain everything step by step. Right. Okay. So what we need to do is just launch fuff. Right. And we're going to specify the URL first. So it's going to be HTTP board.htb. Right. Now, the second we're going to specify is a word list. Now, you can actually do this in any order you want. It doesn't really matter. Right. Um, and the best word list I found that it, there's maybe some other ones, but the one that works for me is um, is the Seckless Discovery DNS subdomains and it's top 1 million and the 1100 whatever, right? And H and but now here what we need to do is specify the host, right? It's very important that you do follow. Um, let me actually make this bigger so you guys can see the whole thing, right? So it's fuff. Just specify the URL, specify the word list, and now this is important, but we need to just put a quotation mark, host, fuzz.board.htb, right, and close the, with the quotation mark. And as soon as I let this run, I'm going to get thousands, there you go, right, I've got millions of requests. What we need to do is just filter this out. So I'm going to do this hyphen H, and we're going to use, just filter out by... Let's just filter it by the size, right? So we need to, I think it's FS. Yeah, it's FS, right? So I'm just going to do FS and it's 15,949, right? I'm just going to let this run. And as you can see, we found a subdomain. I actually found another one. That's interesting. Oh, no. I don't think that. Uh, I think it's a false positive. Right, so we found a subdomain, CRM. And when you add this, if you want to access this subdomain, right? For example, let me actually check if you can access it. Um, I don't think you can, right? If you want to access this subdomain, you might have to, yeah. So I can access this subdomain. What you need to do is resolve this subdomain to your etc host file. So just do the same thing like I, I done. So sudo nano etc host, put the same IP address, right? I you know, I, f I think you can just see them. I'm pretty sure people do it other way, but it doesn't really matter. There we go, right? It's just that way, right? It doesn't really matter where you what way you do it, as long as you specify the IP address and the subdomain or the IP address or something, right? The domain, it'll work for you, right? So as you can see, it worked, and this is the one way that you can enumerate subdomain. Right, so I'm just gonna show you the last part of this video is gonna be I'll show you how to brute force a password, right? So brute forcing passwords is pretty simple, it doesn't really require a lot of knowledge, it's just you need to understand how to actually do it, right? And I don't think there's that many good tutorials on YouTube. Or well, I think they're just rushed or they're not explained very well and you can get sometimes in trouble and not understand a thing or two, right? So in this case, what I've got, I know the username. I'm just basically using the username. You don't need to know it, but I do recommend trying to find a username because it'll make it so much faster and easier, right? Because if you're trying to brute force just the password, it makes it so much faster. But if you're trying to brute force two things, a password and a username, which means there's so many combinations, billions of combinations, it's basically nearly impossible, right? Unless there's default credentials, right? So in this case, my username is Kali, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, what you should do is following inspect, inspect, network, and what you need to do is capture a request. You can use Burp Sweep, I'm just going to use the developer tools, right? So login, and what you're interested in is, you're interested in the post request, right? So you're interested, come to request, and what you get is you get these parameters come to your terminal and this is what you're going to put in fuff put the word list in put the url with the login make sure it's the login page right x post because we need to specify this is a post request not a get request this is used to make the request look more legitimate so it doesn't get blocked i actually checked this it does help if you use this because it basically 
it makes your request more legitimate and it doesn't get blocked and it doesn't get this like basically blocked right by the by the website by the servers now d can i make this yeah i think i can okay let me just make this more um d is basically where you specify your parameters so if you come to your website you should see that the pattern here right log it should be your login log right and pwd password so we have log as the login parameter equals cali we need to specify our username if not then you just put fuzz and and pwd equals fuzz so we're brute forcing the password and also i put a filtering option so i don't get a, a big mess on my screen right so i put 162 for you it might be completely different and i'm just gonna let this run and because the password is pretty weak i should get a request within sorry i should get there we go we already have a response and it says 302 found right 302 means found and if i was to come to the login panel and i put i love you this will do it will lock me in right so this is very very simple how to use fuff for brute forcing i hope you have learned something in this through this brute forcing because i think it's important that you do also know how to brute force especially when it comes to any login panels because there's a lot of websites that have default credentials and it is important that you do know this right right so that will be it i hope you enjoyed this video if you can leave a like subscribe comment as it will help my channel grow and obviously if you have any comments you can just comment down below i'll try to respond as soon as possible i usually respond within a couple hours and if you would like to see other content make sure to check out my course and if you'd like to basically see other videos you're free to they're on my channel enjoy peace